Britain's King Charles and Queen Camilla are in Kenya for a state visit. They received a ceremonial welcome in Nairobi on Tuesday. This visit comes as the East African nation marks 60 years of independence from British colonial rule. And some Kenyans continue to seek reparations for human rights abuses committed by the British Empire. CNN's Max Foster reports from Nairobi. Elizabeth II became queen while visiting Kenya in 1952 on the death of her father. That same year, Mau Mau freedom fighters led by Dedon Kamathi rebelled against British rule. London responded by declaring a state of emergency and its military rounded up more than 90,000 Kenyans who were tortured, maimed and or killed, according to the Kenyan Human Rights Commission. Their death warrants, signed by the British, hang in the Tunnel of Martyrs in Nairobi today. Those who died in the resistance are honoured here at the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior, along with all of Kenya's fallen heroes. King Charles coming here to lay a wreath. But for many Kenyans, they want more than gestures. The British government did concede in 2013 that it sincerely regretted the abuses, but it hasn't accepted responsibility or liability. But it has paid out a settlement of $30 million to more than 5,000 Kenyans who claimed human rights abuses. This mural depicts Kamathi. His daughter, Evelyn, wants a full apology from Charles and reparations from the UK. Though we are not expecting so much because we have tried to reach them but they are telling us he's not a political leader and he cannot make make any political decision but his his willpower his will his good will is the one we want would the king go further and offer a full apology this is what he said at a state banquet held in his honor by president ruto of kenya the wrongdoings of the past are a cause of the greatest sorrow and the deepest regret. There were abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans as they waged, as you said at the United Nations, a painful struggle for independence and sovereignty. And for that, there can be no excuse. So short of a full apology and no mention of reparations. While there has been efforts to atone for the death, injury and suffering inflicted on Kenyan Africans by colonial government, much remains to be done in order to achieve full reparations. We we'll still continue pushing. Yeah, the struggle continues as it does in an increasing number of former British colonies across Africa and the Caribbean. CNN's Max Foster joins me now from Nairobi, Kenya. Max, very good to see you. It looks warm over there. So on the face of it, for those of us mm -hmm. who don't understand the royals as you do, it might seem counterintuitive for the British monarch to go and visit for a 60-year anniversary of the end of British rule over Kenya. What is the purpose of the visit? What is King Charles hoping to get out of it? Um, so it's really, you know, he's here on, the, uh, on government advice. So they're trying to establish a firm relationship between Kenya and the UK, forge a new relationship going forward, of course, getting those economic ties really firmed up as well post-Brexit. So it's about forward-looking, but they are being forward-looking. We're going to see a bit more about that later on in the tour. But this first part was really dealing with the big sort of elephant in the room, which is uh, the rebellion and the horrendous suppression that the Brits um, um, put upon the people of Kenya. And we've actually just had King Charles at this uh, cemetery, this war cemetery. He met World War II veterans, one of which was 117 years old, Samuel, he was called. Uh, they actually had to throw their medals away uh, during the uprising in the 1950s because they didn't want to be associated with the UK. Today, Charles came here and presented them with new medals. So uh, small token gestures, perhaps, but also symbols, really, of how they're trying to move on from the past and forge a way ahead. In terms of popular sentiment, is there a desire to forge deeper ties with Britain, given the, the complex and dark legacy of colonialism there? 
Well, certainly the people we've spoken to, you know, they, they, they feel that that was a, a great era of suppression in Kenya and the legacy lives on. And a lot of it is associated with the economy and how the chaos that followed British rule really damaged the economy and damaged society here. So uh, I think there is a will actually to uh, re-establish ties with the United Kingdom as a full equal partnership going forward so they can benefit in terms of the economy. Always a shadow of what happened in the 1950s. But I think there is a genuine will to deal with that. Of course, Kenyans want reparations which is something the UK isn't offering and probably can't even afford at this point. Max Foster for us in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much. I'll see you in a couple of days.